Hey there guys, Zach here from Inbeta and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10. This is Microsoft's latest version of Windows and includes a number of features and enhancements over the last editions of Windows, which were Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 8.1. In fact, Microsoft have brought back a number of favorites from Windows 7, such as the Start Menu and Windowed Apps, as well as introduced a number of new features such as Action Center, Cortana, and more. So let's take a first look at Windows 10. This is what Windows 10 looks like. This is the new start menu and the start menu is a mix between the Windows 7 start menu and the Windows 8.1 start screen. On the left you get your most used app list much like a Windows 7 as well as quick links to different areas of the system. Down here you get your all apps list which gives you an overview of all the apps installed on, on your device and of course you can launch an app from here quite easily just by selecting it. You've also got this jump view here which allows you to jump easily between different app categories or whatever they're called so by their first letter so if I want to launch Edge I can go to oh sorry Microsoft Edge go to M and then Microsoft Edge is there on the right you get your Windows 8.1 style tile UI which can be customized to your liking so I can resize tiles let's make you medium there and let's drag another app here let's drag the people app make you full screen uh, sorry make you large and then we can add one more app and fit you in there. I can also resize the start menu so I can make it taller or shorter or wider or thinner. So that's pretty great there, lots of different customization options. And if for those Windows 8.1 users who prefer the start screen, you can also re-enable the start screen by going into here. And of course, the start screen is now re-enabled. You can also customize what shows up in the uh, quick access area here. So we can see here, you can actually customize what appears there by going into this area and customizing it to your liking, which is pretty great. Now, like I said, windowed apps are back in Windows 10. Windows 7 users, this isn't really a new feature for you, but Windows 8.1 users, uh, you'll be glad to know that Windows 8 style apps now run in the desktop. So this is the Windows 8 Twitter app, and it's running within the desktop environment, much like any other desktop app. So I can launch File Explorer here, or Notepad. Let's launch Notepad. Uh, Notepad, it's already there. And as you see here, Twitter is still being treated as a normal app, and because of this, Microsoft has a persist feature. So if I snap an app to the left, Windows is now intelligent enough to realize that I'm going to want to snap an app on the opposite side. So it gives me an overview of all the apps running on the system and it just allows me to select one. So I can select File Explorer and now File Explorer will be snapped on the opposite side. Windows 8 users who actually prefer running their apps in full screen mode can absolutely do so just by pressing the full screen button. It will take you out of the desktop experience and back into full screen mode. But I imagine most people will be using it on the desktop from now on. Now, another new feature in Windows 10 is Task View. Task View is a, a new tool that allows you to, which gives you an overview of all the apps open on your system. So let's open up these three apps here. If we go into Task View, you'll see that it gives you an overview of all the apps running. And with this tool, you can also organize your apps easily with the new desktop tool. So this allows you to create multiple desktops. This creates an entire new desktop environment separate from the one you were just running. So it allows you to run new instances of apps. It just, it's treated like an entire separate desktop. Uh, but you can move between apps, uh, desktops quite easily just by going here like that and switching back and forth. And if there is an app that cannot run multiple instances uh, and you select it within a new desktop, it will just switch you back to the old desktop quite easily and quite conveniently. You can also move uh, apps between desktops by simply dragging them to the desktop of your choice like that, which is pretty great. Now Cortana is also new in Windows 10. Cortana is your personal assistant. As you can see when you launch her for the first time she gives you an overview of your day. So tomorrow I have swimming uh, and of course she also gives you like the latest news and other stuff but she also watches things you ask her to watch. So down here I asked her to keep an eye on Microsoft News and so she's done as I said she's taken a look at Microsoft News. You can customize Cortana to your liking. There are a lot of things she will do for you so you can uh, choose how uh, you could, well, here's one that I use all the time. Cortana is very good at reminding me to leave for work or, you know, leave work to get home uh, at a convenient time. So Cortana knows where I work. Cortana knows where I live. So she will keep an eye on traffic. And if traffic's bad at a time I need to leave for work, she will tell me that I need to leave a little bit earlier today, which is quite good. I mean, now I'm never late for work. And this is the kind of idea with Cortana. Cortana will now try and make your life easier by keeping an eye on things that you won't be able to keep an eye on all the time. 
She's also good at, for entertainment purposes. She will keep an eye on latest like, on like nearby cinemas and, and give you ideas of what's screening, give you ticket prices. Same for music. So if there's a concert nearby or an event, she will keep an eye out for events nearby. And when there's one nearby that you, you might be interested in, she'll let you know. She'll go, oh, hey, here's an, here's an event I thought you might be interested in. Are you interested or not? And then you can say yes or no, whatever else. That's all pretty great. And that's just an example of what Cortana can do. Let's give you an actual demonstration. So uh, on Friday, I have uh, a dinner with a friend and I'm worried I might forget. So I'm going to add it to my calendar. And uh, to do this, I can do this with my voice. And I don't even actually have to do it myself. I can just ask Cortana and Cortana will do it for me. Add dinner to my calendar for Friday at 7.30 p.m. Sure thing. Add dinner to your calendar for Friday at 7.30 p.m. Sound good? Yes. Got it. And just like that, Cortana has now added this event to my calendar and I didn't even have to open the calendar app. That's just another example of how Cortana can be very useful to you in the day. Uh, and she's also quite fun as well. So I can ask her to tell me a joke. Tell me a joke. Don't trust the atoms. They make up everything. <laughs> and there you have it. So, uh... That's a good joke from Cortana. Uh, I'd suggest you try her out yourself. She is very good. And once you get the, once you understand how the feature works, uh, you, you can't live without it. Just let's put it that way. Moving on to another new change or more changes in the in Windows 10. Microsoft has updated a number of the system apps. So the Windows 10 Mail app here is brand new and uh, is using a brand new user interface, which works great with desktop, with keyboard and mouse, and of course, touch as well, if you're using a touchscreen device. Uh, so as you can see, I can easily reply. So I'm just going, that's really quite awesome. So awesome source. And I can send that off if I want to. Uh, but then, of course, I can also create new mail here and typing a new mail. The experience is lovely. And of course, you've got rich editing options up here. So I can uh, make text bold, test, make it bold up here. And, and I can also insert tables and other stuff. It all works pretty great and is an excellent app. And the calendar app is the same as well. The calendar app is using a very similar UI because they are pretty much the same app. And you can switch between them quite easily by going down here. So if I click on mail, it will switch to mail. If I click on this, it will switch back to calendar. So then two apps are really great. The Xbox Music and Xbox Video apps are no longer Xbox Music and Video. They're now called Groove Music and Film and TV. And they you don't you no longer buy content from these apps specifically. Instead, you buy them from the store, which makes sense. So with Windows 10, content is delivered from the store. Music, apps, games, films, it's all done from the same app. So as you can see here, if I go into the music tab here, I can now easily buy songs from the store app. So this is 129. If I press that, it will buy it now. And then it will download straight to my computer. If you're a Groove Music subscri uh, subscriber, you can just stream music from the Groove app, which we're about to launch now. So if we launch the Groove Music app here, you'll see that uh, this is my Groove Music collection. And of course, with this app, you will be able to stream instead of buying, unless you're someone who prefers to buy their music, they can go straight to the store and buy their music from there. Same, same idea with the film and TV app. So if we take a look here, to get content on the film and TV app, you have to buy it from the store. Uh, it gives you a quick idea of apps that are or films and games that are featured, not games, films and TV that are featured. So you see, we've got this movie here, clicking on it, and then I can, it'll launch the store and I can buy it straight from the store, which is fantastic. Now, Microsoft has built a brand new browser for Windows 10 called Microsoft Edge. This web browser is the new version of Internet Explorer. It is an Internet Explorer. Those who wish to use Internet Explorer can absolutely do so still as it's already built into the system. It's just hiding. You just need to do it by searching for Internet Explorer. And then there it is, Internet Explorer is there if you want to use it, but I'm not going to demo that today as Internet Explorer is boring. Let's take a look at Edge instead. Edge is a brand new browser in Windows 10 and it's sexy as hell. Uh, this is the homepage and it's like kind of MSN style, but you also get like when you're using the browser more often than I am, you get your most used apps. As, app, app, you can just jump to them, not apps, most used tabs or websites and you just launch them like that. You get the hub here. The hub is home to all of your browser features, I guess. So you've got your favorites, reading list, history, and downloads list. If we go to a website, let's go to winbeta.org. You might notice here, let's go to this page article. There's a new reading mode up here and the reading mode is um, pretty awesome. It allows you to uh, 
condense the web page into just the bits you want to see. So as you can see here, it's going to take this article here. And now I just get to read the content of the article. I don't have to see the rest of the web page. I just get to see the words I'm here to see. Now there's also a new annotation mode as well. And this allows you to annotate the web being that if you're somebody so for example, a cook, I mean, this isn't really a recipe page, but if you're a cook and you're on a web website for recipes, you can now take your web browser and easily jot down notes on the web page. So I can circle words. Uh, so let's see, let's go to the pen tool here and let's circle this word here and also add comments with my keyboard. So I can say that's quite cool and other stuff. So uh, pretend this is a recipe page and I'm just taking notes for the recipe and whatnot. That's kind of the idea with edge and the annotation mode. You can also highlight things. So I can highlight this word here and it's all pretty great. Uh, this works better with touch, but it works just as well on mouse and keyboard as well. Now, one more thing I wanted to talk about in Windows 10 is the Action Center. Now the Action Center is home to all of your notifications and quick access to a number of system tasks. Up here, when if you miss a notification, much like on any other operating system in the world, it will now be housed in the Action Center, which is, which is basically just the notification center. If you think of a notification center on other operating systems, this is what this does. So your missed notifications will be housed here and they will stay there until you deal with them, either by dismissing them or interacting with them. And down here, like I said, you get access to a bunch of quick tasks, which you can actually customize. So you can see here, tablet mode, connect, note, battery, not battery, brightness, and other good stuff there. And you can obviously launch the settings app and we can customize that by going into here, notification and actions, and here you can customize them. So let's remove the all settings app and add battery saver. So the battery saver is now there, which is pretty nice. Let's put settings back. So there you have it guys. That's a very quick look at some of the biggest features in Windows 10. Windows 10 is available from July 29th for free for Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 users. If you're not a Windows 7 or Windows 8.1 user, you'll be able to purchase, or you, I think you can pre-order Windows 10 now, but if not, you'll be able to purchase Windows 10 on July 29th. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.